Today we're going to start our study of Beowulf um, with some background information. Before we get to the background notes, which you can find on pages 10 and 11, I wanted to take just a couple of minutes to talk about um, the character of Beowulf. He was a fictional character. Um, he was uh, completely um, a creation of someone's mind. Um, however, um, it he embodied all of the characteristics and the traits and qualities that the Anglo-Saxon people really valued. And those were bravery, military skill and prowess. Um, he was he was a, a wonderful fighter and, and a successful warrior. Um, he defended his people and, and brought a lot of victory to um, various um, places that he um, was protecting. Um, he was a strong leader, uh, not only with his own troops, but also later in his life when he became the king of his own people. Um, he came from a long lineage of noble men, so he had a great heritage, and he was very wise in making decisions for the better of the people. And so all of those qualities um, are qualities that the Anglo-Saxon people really valued. So, I'm sorry, I can't quit you on him. On page 10 of your notebook, we're going to go over the story of Beowulf. Um, we're actually going to be reading a um, a summary version. The actual poem is, is very um, very difficult to wade through. It was written in Old English, and even the translation is very difficult. Um, and so we are going to be looking at the same story, just in a much easier format. The poem is 3,000 lines long, too. So we're going to get kind of like the... Um, the cliff note version of Beowulf. Same same idea. I think that you'll really enjoy the story because it's a really cool story. Um, it'll just be in a way that's easier for you to understand. So let me give you some background information on Beowulf before we start reading. Start on page 10 of your notebook. Beowulf is generally considered to be the earliest major work of English poetry. So the first, uh, the, the what we recognize as the first major, uh, the first work of English poetry in written form is actually Cademan's Hymn, but Beowulf was the first major work of English poetry. Um, it dates to sometime between 700 and 1000 AD, and it's composed in Old English, um, which makes it very difficult um, to wade through now. Um, even the translation is not as, as, as simple. Um, so there's a lot of mystery that surrounds uh, the story of Beowulf. So we don't know if it's one poet that wrote the entire piece or if it descended from oral storytelling with um, those shopes that we talked about traveling from town to town, telling the story, kind of like the telephone game where it just kind of uh, starts here and you pass it to the next and it just keeps rolling until it becomes some kind of grand epic story. So we don't know the author. It was anonymous, um, and so we, you know, a lot of scholars have said that it is it is the result of oral storytelling, and the story just got bigger and bigger into what it is, to how we know it today. Um, the background information continued. Uh, the setting is in Scandinavia, which today is modern-day Sweden and Denmark. Various elements of the story were probably passed down by Shopes, those storytellers. Many aspects of the poem are fictional. So the characters of Beowulf and Grendel and Grendel's mother are all fiction. Um, but it does seem to have historical roots. The kings Hrothgar, Hygelac, and Onella were all real men in, in Anglo-Saxon history. So the poem is over 3,000 lines long which is huge. It's, it's a huge story, a uh, poem. Um, and it's written in an unrhymed, four-beat alliterative verse, and I'm going to show you what that means um, in just one second. Here is the Old English um, text of the first uh, li few four lines of Beowulf. And so you'll notice this is Old English. Um, there are a lot of letters, especially that we don't recognize uh, in English today. These are letters that have changed over time into the letters that we use 
um, today, but these are old English letters. But so unrhymed, 4B alliterative verse. Unrhymed is pretty, um, pretty self-explanatory. There are no in rhymes, uh, lines rhyming with each other, and there are no internal rhymes either. So there's no rhyme in the middle that rhymes with a rhyme on the end or, or so on and so forth. Um, four beat means that there are um, there are four beats in the uh, the poem. So that's four stressed syllables in the poem. So it's low praise the prowess people kings. Okay, so um, you have four beats within the poem and it's written in alliterative verse. So that means that there are repetitions of consonant sounds within. Praise the prowess of people kings of spear armed Danes and days long sped. Um, Skyled the scaffing from squadron foes. You hear that re repetition of those consonants as P's and D's and S's um, in to the beat. Moving on. The poem tells the story of a noble warrior who becomes king of the gates, and it's divided into three parts. Um, the first part is Beowulf as a young warrior where he fights Grendel and Grendel's mom. The second part are his days as the ruler of the gates. And then the last part of the poem is his final battle to protect his kingdom against the, um, the, the great dragon. So the original manuscript is owned by the British Library in London. Um, it was damaged in a fire in 1731. As a result, um, a lot of the pages are burned and brittle, and there are parts of them that can no longer be read, but you can still view it. Um, it's under protected glass um, there at the British Library in London. Um, there was no a title included in the original manuscript. It was later added by scholars. Um, they didn't have to work too hard to come up with a title, so just Beowulf. But um, interestingly enough, um, that is, they, they had to add the title. There's no author, um, so a, there's a lot of mystery with Beowulf. All right, so we're going to get started with um, the text. So if you will close out this um, screencast, um, and we'll pick back up with the next one on our study of Beowulf.